In this video, I am going to introduce you to factoring. Um, the introduction is going to be on how to find the greatest common factor and how to take that out. So how do I know when to do what? This is a chart that's going to be very important for you throughout the entire lessons on uh, factoring. Step one is always going to be to find the greatest common factor. Greatest common factor means the factor that each term has in common. Then for step two, you identify the number of terms. We don't necessarily have to worry about this part just yet because we'll learn about all these different methods in the upcoming lessons. So for now, we're just going to be concerned about the greatest common factor. So I'm going to be looking on page 486 in your book page 486 and we're going to do problems 2 through 70 even. So problems 2 through 22 are just going to give us um, the knowledge on how to find the greatest common factor. We aren't actually going to be factoring just yet. So we're looking for what each set or each term uh, has in common. So my greatest common factor here, the number that 15 and 35 have in common is Five. So that's the greatest common factor. On number four, you will notice if you are looking at the book with us that I have taken out one of the numbers. I did that for a little bit more of simplicity in this lesson. Um, in this class, we are only concerned about the basics, and I feel that last number made it a little less basic. So the greatest common factor here, you might automatically think 11. But there is a higher number. A higher number that will work is 22. Remember, we are looking for the greatest common factor, means the bigger number that, they, that goes into both of them. Now, I've got y to the 7th and y to the 9th. Well, if I were to write y to the 7th out, I would have 7 y's. Then if I were to write out y to the 9th, I would write 9 y's. So we're trying to find out the biggest number of y's we can take from both groups. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So your greatest common factor here would be y to the seventh. You will notice that your greatest common factor is always going to include your smallest exponent. So your greatest common factor for number 8 would be, if you can't read these, that's a b to the 4th, a b to the 6th, and a b to the 8th. So your greatest common factor is a b to the 4th. If you were to draw them like I did my y's, you would notice that the most b's you can take from all three groups would be four of them. So on number 10, you've got to look at your numbers and your numbers and your letters with your letters. So I've got an 8 and a 24 here. The biggest number that goes into 8 and 24 is 8. And then the biggest number of y's we can take out at one time. You've got a y to the 9th and a y to the 3rd. The most we can take from both sets would be a y to the 3rd. Now I've got a 9, a 6, and a 12 on number 12. Between those three numbers, you can take out a 3. Remember, it's got to be a number that goes into all three of these terms. And then you've got to be to the 3rd, b to the 5th, and b to the 4th. So the biggest number of b's you can take out is 3. On number 14, you've got a 12, an 18, and a 6. So the biggest number would be 6, and then you've got an a to the 3rd, a squared, and an a to the 4th. You have to use the smallest exponent, which was a squared. Then you've got a b squared, b to the 3rd, and b to the 4th, which would be a b squared for your biggest amount of b's you can take from all three groups. 
Greatest common factor on 16, I've got 12, 15, and 21. Well, the biggest number that goes into both of them is three. And let's look at our x's. I've got an x to the third, an x squared, and then no x is here. So that means we can't take any x's out because this 21 does not have an x in its term. Remember, you have to be able to take it out from all three terms. Then you look at your y's. I've got a y here in this term, and I've got a y here in this term, but I don't have a y in this term. So that means I can't take any y's out. So my greatest common factor for number 16 is three. Now on number 18, between 18, 27, and 81, your greatest common factor would be nine. Got an x to the third, an x to the fourth, and an x. So that's understood to be an x to the first, so that would be the smallest number of x's. A y squared, a y squared, and a y squared. So I can take out all those y squareds. A z to the third, z to the third, and just a z. So your greatest common factor here would be 9x y squared z. On number 20, we've got a 3, a 5, and a 9. There is no number that goes into both 3, 5, and 9, except for 1. I can't take any A's out because there's no A with the 9. Can't take any B's out because there are no B's with the 5. And I can't take any C's out because these two terms don't have any C's. So when you only have a greatest common factor of one, we would always say that our problem is prime. But for the um, purposes of this exercise, we will say the greatest common factor is one. So now number 22, we've got to treat this problem as, as two different parts, just like we've done everything else. So I've got a 12 here, four here. So the biggest number that goes into 12 and four is four. And then I've got an A plus B to the fourth and an A plus B to the third. So the biggest number of A plus B's I can take out is three. So that would be my greatest common factor. Factoring is when you break something apart to be something times something else. So like in this problem here, y'all are used to in the last unit distributing this two out to get two times three x is six x, two times four is eight. So y'all are used to us bringing it from this form into this form. Well in factoring, you're breaking it up to be something times something else. So you would actually break it up to be that two times three x plus four. You would say, okay, what do these have in common? What is the greatest common factor? Well, what goes into both terms would be two. And then instead of multiplying, we're going in the opposite direction. So we would actually divide each of these by that two. So six x divided by two is three x. 8 divided by 2 is 4. So that is factoring, when you break something apart to be something times something else. So let's look at number 24 in your book. So in number 24, I've got 15x minus 15. So the number they have in common is 5. That's my greatest common factor. So to find what I would have inside of my parentheses, because it's got to be something times something else, I would divide each of these terms by five. Those fives cancel, leaving me with just an x. And then five goes into that 15 three times. So you're left with x minus three. When factoring, you can always check your answer by multiplying back out. If you get what you started with, then you have done it correctly. 26, we could take out a seven. We couldn't take out any p's because this term doesn't have any p's. So 
couldn't take out any Q's because this term doesn't have any Q's. So I divide each of these terms by 7 to get P minus 3Q. Because those 7's cancel, leaving you with P. And then 7 goes into 21 three times, and that Q just comes over. X plus 2. There is nothing that these two terms have in common except for a 1. So whenever you have a greatest common factor of 1, you would write your answer as prime. And remember, prime numbers are numbers that have factors of only 1 in itself. So that's why we would write that answer of prime. Okay. This is where people start to get a little shaken up. On number 30, we can take out a 5n. Number that goes into 30 and 35 is 5, and the most number of n's you can take out is an n to the first. So we divide each of these by 5n. 30 divided by 5 is 6. You have two n's. You take one away, so you're left with an n. 5 goes into 35 seven times. These ends will cancel. So that's your answer. On number 32, you can pull out a 6y. The common number between 12 and 6 is 6. And then the most number of y's you can take out is that 1y. So divide each of these by 6y. 6 goes into 12 two times. You've got two y's. You take one away, so you're left with that one y. Those 6's cancel, and those y's cancel. So anytime you divide something by itself, you're always left with a 1. And hopefully that's something you remember from section 5.6 on dividing polynomials. On number 34, your greatest common factor is 14b. So when you divide each of these terms by 14b, you should get those 14s to cancel. 2b's take one away, so you're left with just b. 28 divided by 14 is 2, and those b's will cancel out. Remember, you can check your answer by multiplying these out. On number 36, you've got 8x squared and 5. Notice that there's not an x in both terms, so you can't take out an x. And 8 and 5 don't have any common factors. So that means that our answer is going to be prime. Now looking at number 38, greatest common factor is going to be 12b squared. So when you divide each of these by 12b squared, 36 divided by 12 is 3. You have 4b's. You take 2 away, so you're left with b squared. 12, I'm sorry, 24 divided by 12 is 2, and those b squareds are going to cancel. Number 40, your greatest common factor is 9xy. So when we divide each of these by 9xy, notice we have something divided by itself. You know that answer will be 1. 18 divided by 9 is 2. These x's are going to cancel. You've got two y's. You take one away, so you're left with just one y. I apologize for the cat meows. Number 42, I can take out a 9 pq. So 
So 9 goes into 36 four times. Got two P's, you take one away, so you're left with one P. You have two Q's, you take one away, you're left with one Q. And then when you divide something by itself, you're left with just one. Number 44, I can take out a seven. So I'm left with, and for the record, you can't take out an A because this 42 does not have an A. You've got A's here, A's here, but you don't have an A here. Remember, it has to come out of every single term. So when you divide each of these terms by seven, you're left with A squared plus three A minus six. Those sevens canceled to give you the A squared. Seven went to 21 three times. Seven went to 42 six times. Now on number 46, we can take out a 5x because 5 divides into each of these terms and you have an x in each term. So when I divide each of these by 5x, your 5's cancel leaving you with x squared. And you got x squared because when you have 3x's and you take one away, you're left with just 2. 5 goes into 15 three times. You've got two x's, you take one away, so you're left with x. 5 goes into 25 five times. Those x's are going to cancel, leaving you with this as your answer. Moving on to number 48, we've got to look at what every term has in common. So I can take out a 2s. I can't take out any t's because this term has t's, this term has t's, this term does not. So you cannot take out any t's. So you divide each of these by 2s. So those s's cancel. 4 divided by 2 is 2. These s's cancel. 6 divided by 2 is... 3, bring over your T. These S's cancel, leaving you with 14 divided by 2 is 7, and then bring your T squared over. Now, over here, you can take out a 3AB. Your threes and your a's both cancel. So you have b squared. So you have two b's. You take one away. So you're left with one b. Six divided by three is two. Those a's cancel, and those b's cancel. Minus fifteen divided by three is five. You have two a's. You take one away. So you're left with one a and then your B's are going to cancel. On number 52, you can take out a 7x squared Y. Draw that little barrier so we can tell where our answer starts. So 7 goes into 28 four times. Your x squareds are going to cancel. And you have a y to the third. So you have three y's. You take one away, so you're left with y squared. 35 divided by 7 is 5. Your x squareds are going to cancel. You have two y's. You take one away, so you're left with just one y. 42 divided by 7 is 6. And then you have three x's, you take two away, so you're left with one x, and then your y's are going to cancel. Now on 54, we can take out an 8p squared. So 
So when we take out an 8p squared, these 8s will cancel. You have 6p's, you take 2 away, so you're left with a p to the 4th. 8 goes into 40 5 times. You have 4p's, you take 2 away, so you're left with a p squared. 8 goes into 24 3 times. You have 3 p's, you take 2 away, so you're left with 1. 16 divided by 8 is 2, and your p's are going to cancel because you have 2 p's, you take 2 away, so you're left with just none. Number 56, you can take out a 7ab squared. So 7 goes into 14 two times, your A's will cancel, and you have 4 B's, you take 2 away, so you're left with just 2 B's. 21 divided by 7 is 3. 2 A's, you take 1 away, so you're left with 1 A. 3 B's, you take 2 away, so you're left with 1 B. 35 divided by 7 would be that 5. You have three A's, you take one away, so you're left with a squared, and your B squareds are gonna cancel. Oops, I'm gonna make that a little more defined so you can read it. And then, to finish off, you've got seven goes into 28 four times, your A's cancel and your B's cancel. Now 58 through 62, you have to have a little bit of an imagination for. So we have two terms here. We have this term here, we have this term here. So what is my greatest common factor? What do they have in common? The answer would be y plus 5. So once you take a greatest common factor out, what we are used to seeing is opening up those parentheses. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to open up this parentheses and write what we have left. So I'm going to divide by that greatest common factor. So those y plus 5's would cancel in each term. So we're left with y minus 3. We are finished. So on number 60, you look for what they have in common. So we have this here and this here. So they both have a 3x minus 4y in common, and then write what you have left in those parentheses. So you divide by that 3x minus 4y on each term, and you're left with x minus y. Now, on number 62, I have C minus D that's in common. So when I divide by C minus D, these are going to cancel, leaving me with 2A minus B. And we are finished. So on 64 through 70, these are supposed to teach us that whenever you take out a greatest common factor, you need to be aware that you can never have a leading coefficient negative. Remember, a leading coefficient is that number that's in the very front. You can never have that be a negative. So what we do is we take out a negative 1 and divide each term by negative 1 to get what we have in our parentheses. So negative u squared divided by negative 1 is a positive u squared. Negative 4u divided by negative 1 is a positive 4u. And then 9 divided by negative 1 is negative 9. So that is our answer. Remember, we cannot have a negative 
leading coefficient. Now that we took that negative 1 out, we now have a positive u squared. On number 66, again our greatest common factor would be a negative 1 because we've got a 5, a 1, and a 4. There's nothing that goes into both all three of those terms. You only have m's in these first two, so this last one doesn't have an m, so I can't take any m's out. These outside terms have n's, but this middle one does not, so I can't take out any n's. So I'm going to divide each term by a negative 1. So these two negatives are going to give me a positive 5m squared n. These two negatives, when you divide them, will give you a positive m. And then 4n squared divided by negative 1 is negative 4n squared. Now on number 68, I can take out a negative 3. I cannot take out a y because this 12 does not have a y. So negative 6y to the 5th divided by negative 3 is a positive 2y to the 5th. 9y to the 3rd divided by negative 3 is negative 3y to the 3rd. 18y divided by negative 3 is negative 6y. 12 divided by negative 3 is negative 4. And then finally, number 70. We can take out a negative 4ab squared. So I'm going to divide each of these by negative 4ab squared. So negative 8 divided by a negative 4 is a positive 2. 4 a's, you take 1 away, so you're left with an a to the third and then your b squareds are going to cancel. 4 divided by negative 4 is negative 1. You have 2 a's, you take 1 away, so you're left with 1a. 3 b's, you take 2 away, so you're left with 1b. And then you have a 12 divided by negative 4, which gives you a negative 3. Your a's cancel. You have 3 b's, you take 2 away, so you're left with 1b. I hope this lesson has helped you on taking out the greatest common factor. I wish you the best of luck.